So I've titled this talk, A Calorie is Not a Calorie. So you might be thinking, what on earth are you talking about? Well, when I first completed school as a personal trainer, in the literature, it more or less said, calories in, calories out. You know, a calorie is a measurement of energy use. So virtually, if we're consuming less or burning more calories than we ingest, we should either maintain weight or lose weight. It did make logical sense. Um, I also was a big fan of Jillian Michaels and followed, you know, Biggest Loser and all that. And I loved her training style. And so I ended up getting one of her books and reading it. And I totally grasped onto the information she gave and thought it was kind of all good and true. And over time, I've learned there's been some flaws in some of her messages in terms of nutrition. Um, so one of them was calorie in, calories in, calories out. The other one was um, that basically you must eat every three hours or you're going to burn your muscle. And so I kind of believed it, preached it, practiced it for years. And then I started doing some more research because science is constantly you know changing and growing and teaching us new things and as a trainer every two years I have to get recertified in the same field or in some field that's involving um, health nutrition physical training whatever so I started getting more into the nutrition thing and as I've researched more I started learning wow that idea of eating you know the six meals a day the standard bodybuilding type of uh, way of eating is really not healthy nor is it optimal so what I did determine was that when you include a fasting period in your life you're able to sustain the most amount of muscle increase your testosterone naturally and reduce bodily inflammation which is just an overall benefit of better health so let's talk about calories so calories are broken down a lot of people don't even know what macronutrients are that's just kind of like a what are you talking about so let me kind of break it down for you so a macronutrient is a protein a fat or a carbohydrate now you've probably heard all those terms and so you're familiar with it but some people still don't really understand like well what should my macros be and how do i even determine that and honestly for for each person it is going to be a little different but not so different that you can't be, you know, kind of go off a basis of here's a good baseline and then let's kind of play with it from there. So we'll talk about some good macros a little later on. But um, so macronutrients are one portion of our food, what our calories entail, and then there's micronutrients. So micronutrients are things like your sodium and your sugar and your vitamins, phytonutrients, minerals, etc. So all these types of things that are in micro form in our food. So all foods, when they enter our body, it's almost like our body is like a computer that analyze, uh, it analyzes what this food is and it looks for the building blocks of life. So it looks for vitamins A, C, D, and E. So if it's missing one of those four things, it says, oh, we're missing something here. So we're going to need to go and steal from your current cells in your body to be able to process this food because it's missing that key ingredient. So knowing that eating your food in a whole food sense can give you peace of mind because a whole food actually contains macronutrients and micronutrients and a perfect blend where your body can go, oh, I know what this is. It's not a chemical. It's not some foreign thing that was made in a lab. It's actual food and I know how to process it. And if I don't need this much, I can eliminate um, the ones I, I need to you know, save up on, I can store. So there's all kinds of things our body does when we eat whole foods. But what if we're eating foods that are known as crap foods? And we're gonna talk about those. So crap foods, it's actually an acronym. So the C stands for carbonated drinks. Um, a lot of you would think, okay, I can understand carbonated drinks, especially like soda as being unhealthy, and not a benefit to our body. But even like sparkling water, which I do enjoy and drink, um, you wanna limit it because carbonation does two things to you. Number one, it hurts the enamel of your teeth and it also is hard on our bones. But further than that, if you're somebody that already struggles with a food addiction or you know being overweight, 
what carbonation does is it actually that trigger in your brain that says, hey, I'm satisfied or I'm full, it actually shuts it off so that you don't have that sensation of, oh, I should stop eating now. So the problem that they've noticed is that people that pair a carbonated beverage with their meal often overeat because they never get that real sensation of fullness. So that's why we wanna try to be really limited with, with uh, sparkling waters and other carbonated drinks just kick to the curb. Um, the second one, the R in crap food stands for refined sugars. Now, I think a lot of you understand how bad sugar is for you. If you don't know, it is eight times more addicting than heroin. It causes massive inflammation. It's cancer's favorite food. So there's a lot of reasons to quit sugar, along with the fact that it sets you up for diabetes, heart disease, obviously obesity. They've actually linked soda and just sweet beverages as one of the leading causes of obesity. So cut out the refined sugars. Um, the third one, the A stands for artificial flavoring and alcohol. So these two things are known as anti-nutrients because they actually are so detrimental to our body that when we ingest them, our body's immune system says like, whoa, what did you just give me? And it actually has to again, steal from your other cells to make it able to even digest and process that out your body. So um, it's also been linked to things like um, various symptoms, diseases, and it's very, those are all addicting. So again, you wanna cut out or eliminate as much as possible artificial flavorings and alcohol. Number four, processed foods. So processed foods, not only are they bad because again they're not a whole food but they're bad because they contain sugar almost all of them even things that you would you mean start reading your labels when you go shopping you're going to be blown away heck go to your cupboard right now and start looking through things that you would never think would have added sugar and i bet you money there's added sugar so it's hidden in everything because it's cheap and easy um also a lot of processed foods contain trans fats and i am a big hater of trans fats because there's a massive link between trans fats or hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils and cancer so you know for people that that live in canada and europe these are banned you're not even allowed to have them in your foods in those countries but here in america they're prevalent in fact they're in more than 80,000 food products in our stores 80,000. So really check the labels as you begin buying your groceries because if you have even the smallest amount of trans fat into your body, do you know that it takes your body 100 days to process that out? So it's not worth it. It's absolutely toxic and just terrible for you. So um, again, why we want to skip crap foods is because they're missing key nutrients. Our body then has to steal. And I've seen this in firsthand, I have a client, had a client that was extremely obese. And when I did an assessment on him, we actually determined that he had 42 deficiencies. And of all the people that I've done nutrition assessments on, I was blown away and I thought, how is this even possible? But then it rang a bell and thought, well, yeah, he's been eating crap foods. And when you go through years and years of eating garbage, and things that are processed and refined, you are constantly depleting your cells of the nutrients, the micronutrients that they need because they have to steal them so they can just digest the junk you just ate. So you can literally be 500 pounds and be malnourished. So put that one on for size. It's crazy to even think about because we would never look at somebody that was morbidly obese and think, boy, they're malnourished, yet they are oftentimes because they've continually eaten fake foods and fake sugars and fake anything is just going to give you a lot of problems so as best you can cut it out and start realizing what calories are quality and like i said when you're eating whole foods it's pretty easy to go okay what's a whole food well if it grows in the ground if you can go hunt for it if it's something that is not in a box a can whatever package it's, a, it's most likely a whole food. And when it's a whole food, your body receives it well, knows how to digest it, and doesn't have to steal from any of your current cells. So it's always a better, better fit. So in terms of what macros you should set, it really depends on you. 
but I do recommend that you eat low carb. Every person it has, has the pyramid upside down because, or should have the pyramid upside down because the food pyramid tells you 50% of your macros should be carbohydrates. That's terrible, terrible advice. And when you look at Americans, you can see we've followed the food guy pyramid quite well and you can see what it's done to us. I mean, nowadays it's almost rare to see somebody that's of healthy, normal body weight. It's much more common to see somebody overweight or having acne and skin issues and all kinds of symptoms because of the toxic food that we constantly ingest and have shoved at us. So, so it's important that you, your calories, your macros for the carbohydrates should not exceed 30%. But ideally, you want to be between like 10 and 20, okay? So if you've been eating a really high carb lifestyle, try to cut back as much as you can and try to get yourself down to 10 to 20% carbohydrates. For your protein, this is another one that is way overdone in America. And especially like in the fitness industry, people are just obsessed with protein. They think protein is just like the way of life. And it's, it's the only way to build muscle and it's the only way to have all these things. And protein is very important. I'm not gonna deny that. However, we over protein ourselves to death and it's really hard on our liver. So the way you figure out what protein you need is you actually take your body weight so if you're of healthy body weight, take your healthy body weight and on a calculator, times that by 0.6. That will give you the amount of grams that you need daily for your protein intake and shoot to try to hit that goal. If you are overweight, but you know what, what would be a healthy BMI or a healthy weight for you, then take that weight, that healthy weight, times it by 0.6 and then set that in your macros so that you know, okay, well, this is my percentage for protein. And then fats is the other portion we wanna talk about. And fats have just gotten such a bad rap for so many years because there was this massive war on fat. Like, fat's so bad for you, and if you eat fat, you're gonna get fat, and fat's gonna make you have a heart attack, and it's all lies. It's propaganda, it's agenda, to try to move these really trendy, low-fat, fat-free foods. And it's just not healthy. When something comes like in its natural form, like say, butter or um, milk, when you pull the fat out of it, you actually make it harder for your body to be able to digest it. So it's really not natural. Um, so we want to be the most natural that we can be. So for your fat macros, you want to have your fat macros no less than 60%. Up to 90, depending on how hardcore you want to go with the keto lifestyle. So check those out. You can use MyFitnessPal to try to like get your macros figured out. However, it does not calculate net carbs. So if you don't know what net carbs are, when you, when you look at an ingredient, like a list on your label, it'll say carbohydrates, and then below it, it'll tell you how much fiber is in it. So you subtract the fiber from the carbohydrates to then know, okay, well, this is how many net carbs this food has in it. So when you're entering stuff into MyFitnessPal and you go to look at your macros down in your little pie chart, you might freak out and go, oh my gosh, how did I eat 50 grams of carbs? I thought I was, you know, at 30. But if you go under your micronutrients, then you could see what your total fiber was, subtract it out, and then go, okay, well, this is my actual, real, true net carbs. Um, so if you have more questions on it, feel free to ask. Post them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do that. Give it a thumbs up if this was a helpful video. And get to eating healthier, cut out the crap foods, and just see how good you'll feel. You'll be absolutely amazed at how good you'll feel.